Bonjour mes amis, my name is Freya and I'm back with another Geneforge tutorial. Now, if you like the way your creature looks at this stage of the game, you can stop here. You can skip ahead to the timestamp I'm indicating right now. Or you can keep going with me and fine tune things. The next step for me is going to be texturing this manually. In order to do that, I am going to get out of the render mode. I'm going to switch my render engine temporarily to cycles, change my device to GPU compute. And for each part, I'm going to bake the texture. I'm using a diffuse bake type. I'm not counting any direct or indirect lighting. And I'm going to make a new image calling it Ear Texture. And I'm going to do this for each body part. It can get a little bit tedious, so I'm gonna skip ahead. All right, and once you've done that for every part, you can get rid of the color associated nodes and replace them with the image textures. If you are using a bump map, make sure you leave the bump stuff intact because I didn't bake those into the textures. You can bake your bump map too, I'm pretty sure, but I didn't. Also make sure to leave the driver nodes intact, that way you keep the automatic sexual dimorphism as well as the aging. This is just a little finishing touch here, I'm sharpening the teeth. <laughs> Not that you're likely to ever see them in enough detail that it would matter. And what you can do now is you can open up the folder where you've saved all of your textures and you can modify them in the image editing software of your choice. And here we are, this is where you get absolute precision control over everything to do with your textures. So if you're not fully happy with them in the procedural process, now's the time to fix it. One more thing to note, you should definitely try to extend the head texture down a bit because the different facial expressions have different requirements for the UVs. Some of them need it to extend a little bit further and you don't want to end up with a black spot on your Norn's chin when they're in different poses. All right, mind the phytoplankton, I'll just load up our other one. And we now have the finished texture applied. Now remember to set your render engine back to EV. You don't want to do this in cycles. <laughs> Make sure once again that all of your settings reflect the output that you want and hit render. Okay, copy over your body data if you haven't already. And now we're going to compile. This is the old-fashioned way to compile an egg agent. There is currently an in-progress feature called EggForge. With my luck, it'll be done by the time this video goes up. If it is done, use that method instead because it's probably much easier. First things first, make a folder for your project, and you'll want to add a program called PreBuilder. Next, take all your sprites, paste them in, take all your body data, paste it in. Next, you want to take the baby-sized sprites of the head facing forwards. I'm using the happy expression. That'll give me the file ca0041.png, but you can use any expression you want. You're going to want to put that on a black background, and you're going to want to save it as a .bmp. Give it a file name like Synergy Female Glyph. And the BMP settings are important. You want to save it as 24-bit, and you want to make sure that the flip row order box is checked. Do the same for the males. Double check your settings. And now you can make your egg glyphs in Sprite Builder. Make a new sprite, insert bitmap, replace bitmap, choose one of the bitmaps you made, file, save as, 
synergy female glyph dot c16. Replace with the male. Save as synergy male glyph dot c16. At this point, you can do the prey file manually, and there's instructions on how to do so on the wiki, but I prefer to use easy prey. New template, egg, egg layer info, synergy norns, genetics file. I need a genetics file. We made a genetics file in the last test run, so I'm just going to save a copy of it to the new directory. Norn.synergy.truewarmblood. And where it says genetics file, you'll want to put norn.synergy.truewarmblood. Synergy male glyph.c16 and the female version. Change egg animation string to zero. Under additional files, add multimedia or genetic files to current agent or egg. Yes, they exist on my project path. You'll want to navigate to the project path and select pretty much everything you have. Now, theoretically, you can compile using EasyPrey, but I find that it struggles with breeds because there's so many files, so I like to just save as. Prey synergy dot text. Take your text file and drag it on top of Prey Builder. You'll now have an agents file with the same name. I'm gonna rename it synergy norns dot agents. Copy that. Paste it into docking station slash my agents. Open up your game and make a test world. Go to your egg layer and see if you can find them. Ah, here they are. Egg glyphs seem to be working. Teach them to talk, age them up. And it's a good idea to play test them for a few generations just to make sure that every pose that they encounter naturally throughout the course of their lifespan is okay and doesn't return any errors with the sprites. And that's how to use Geneforge to make a new breed for Creatures Docking Station. That's gonna do it for this video, so thank you everybody so much for watching. If you enjoyed, let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!